here is already looking forward to the cocktail party. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is the way you want to paddle. They're, they can't wait to get to drinks. Um, so we're going to try something a little different here, what we call a quick fire challenge. Uh, Quaker Oats puts out an RFP. Uh, it, the recipe is very simple. I'm going to get out of the way as soon as I can to let it start. One new product in need of a mobile strategy, one RFP, one brand marketer, three solutions providers. Uh, this is the recipe for the session that we've cooked up here uh, the, and to try to illuminate not only what brands need um, and the depth of their understanding of customers already that mobile providers need to address, but also the range of, uh, of mobile solutions that are out there and the imagination, uh, I think, that we're going to see demonstrated by all of these solutions providers um, for our brand marketer. I can't th thank enough um, our marketer, Barbara Liss, who is the Director of Digital Engagement for Quaker Oats, she took the lead on this. Uh, she knows both sides of the pitch session as she came to Quaker Oats uh, earlier this year from Digitas where she worked on the Miller Coors account. Um, but uh, but in just a, the le in just less than a year at PepsiCo, she's been bringing familiar brands like Captain Crunch into the latest marketing platforms, uh, and something that she's also going to do today for a new product from Quaker Oats. As you'll see, Barbara is Barbara and her team have come up with a fairly in-depth profile of not only of the product but also their target market. Uh, something that we've asked all of these mobile solutions providers to address. The way this is going to work is she's going to lay it out for us and then receive pitches on mobile solutions from three familiar mobile marketing companies. Uh, I think most of you are familiar with the companies and maybe some of the people here. Kim Lugers, who's going to present for Pandora, I think as many of you know, because many of you probably have Pandora throughout your house, as I do in mine. Um, it's, uh, Pandora is the leading mobile personalized radio provider with, I think, uh, Kim, you just told us 70% of your audience, 70% of their activity is coming from mobile now. Doug Stovall, who will present for Hip Cricket, uh, one of the most experienced mobile marketing companies in the field with thousands of text and other mobile media campaigns to their credit, now a part of the Augme family of mobile solutions providers. And Michael Voss of App Savvy, uh, a company that works to integrate brands into the app ecosystem across both social networks and mobile in ways that I know that you'll see today. All of the panelists received the full RFP a week ago with the same marching order. They get five-minute pitches that should be aimed at offering, Martha, uh, offering Barbara real solutions. So let's see how they do. I'll be the evil timekeeper. Uh, and with that, I'm going to introduce Barbara Liss, who's going to bring us up to speed on what Quaker Oats has in mind and what they need from a mobile strategy. Barbara? Thank you. Um, I'm really, really excited about this, and hopefully, it's going to be something different from what you've what you've seen before. So, before we get to the the real excitement, I'm just going to ground you guys a little bit in how we came up with this idea and what we're thinking about in terms of of mobile with within Quaker. A um, few weeks ago, Steve called and he said, "Quaker, do you guys want to speak on a mobile panel for us?" And I said, "I would love to, but I'm going to come clean to to all of you that." Quaker isn't where we need to be yet in terms of mobile. So I didn't have something to come up here and be like, look how amazing this is. We've transformed the world of CPG. We didn't want to do that. But at the same time, we felt that there's probably a lot of people out there who are in a similar position that we are or with agencies trying to bring clients like myself along with them. So we said, what if we kind of propose a solution, turn this thing upside down, and ask some of the partners who we see on a regular basis to come in and help solve some of those problems. So we'll talk a little bit about that later and I need you guys to pay really good attention as there will be some audience voting involved. So I'm gonna look to you for questions and, and your feedback as a lot of you are mobile experts. So that's a Quaker logo. <laughs> um, so one of the things we're doing at Quaker is we're, we're trying to elevate our brand from a brand that everybody knows, loves, or likes a lot and trusts to a love mark. How do we really build that relationship with our consumers? And I think the digital space is the best way for us to go about doing that versus TV, print, some of the places where we've been really heavily invested in the past. When we think about who our bullseye consumer is across the majority of our brands, it's this, this modern savvy mom. You know, we don't have dollars that we can go after every single person, so who makes the most sense for us? It's the person who does the most work for us or will if we give her the right tools. So she's connected, she's a publisher, her friends trust her, 
And most importantly for us is she's actually the gateway to every other consumer that we're trying to reach, whether it's other moms, men, women, her kids. This one woman can help service all of those needs for us. So as we look at digital overall from Quaker, we've kind of decided that the things we want to do are inspire our consumers, we want to educate them, and we want to use digital to enable them to improve their lives. So how can we offer them things as a brand that they, they trust to make their lives a little easier? And the things that we're going to focus on next year is really about building our community and taking more advantage of what they have to offer and providing them great pieces of content and information and engagement in return. Commerce is a big area we're going to focus on next year from both kind of an online e-tailer, but also via mobile and social and some other platforms. And then mobile, which is why we're here today, is we know we need to be in this space. What's the right way to get there and how do we do it? And then display, which is kind of your bare bones, must, must be in space. This is just a fancy look at how technologies evolve slide. Tablets, phones. It's a little longer than I thought, but you get the you get the message. So speaking of all those great tablets and devices and the things our consumers need to do, this space is really critical to us. Mom is our bread and butter for all of our Quaker products. So you can just see some of the, the stats here. This should be nothing new to, to any of you, but mobile is now the device she trusts the most. It's the device that's always on her, and it's the device she's using to both communicate, shop, research, et cetera. So for us, it's really mission critical that we figure out how do we talk to her in a way that's meaningful to her because she's not necessarily the most tech savvy person out there, but we have to do it in a way that, that means something to her. So how are we going to do it? I'm fortunate. I work for within the PepsiCo family, and a lot of our other brands have already made great strides in that space. So Tropicana, Sobe, Pepsi. Let's learn from what they've done, what, how we can improve, and how we can enhance. How are we going to do things totally differently? This is a program that Pepsi did, which was all about location-based marketing and using it to drive traffic in-store. Again, at the end of the day, I need to sell more oatmeal. So how can we do that? in the right way. So what's our mobile agenda look like in 2012? And this is just kind of to ground you as to where a CPG company, I think most of them are in very similar situations that, that we are. We all want to be further than we are, and we know we need to get there. So improved mobile sites and functionality. I'm, you know, we're all good friends at this point in the afternoon. I'm embarrassed to admit, you know, QuakerOats.com on your mobile device isn't where it needs to be. So that's the first of our priorities is to fix that. Because when mom's in the grocery store or anywhere and she goes to quickroads.com for her favorite oatmeal cookie recipe, that experience better be pretty good. So how do we improve that? How do we integrate into current and existing apps that are out there? A lot of times we get ideas where people are like, let's build a whole game where people eat oatmeal and then they win prizes and it's like, you know what, by the time you spend money to build it, spend money to tell people there, you know how many people better play that game before you ha have any positive ROI? It, it, it's a lot, and it's oftentimes the first place as a lot of our partners go. So for us, it's a strategy of reaching people where they are, but in a way that makes sense for our brand. And then finally, really looking at mobile advertising, another space we haven't done a ton of work in. One of those stats I showed earlier talks about the effectiveness of mobile ads and how moms are using them. And then look at the couponing opportunities and some of the more retail driving things. And then, of course, testing and learning. We're an organization that, while big and people might think we have you know, a, a ton of money, we're, it's not as flexible as, as you might think. So how do we find the right opportunities to test and learn over the next six to nine months and really decide where we want to make our big bets? Tablets, certainly something that we're really interested in, but we, we're not quite sure what are the best way to integrate with them beyond just your basic advertising opportunities. Commerce, how do we find the right partners, again, to drive people into stores, to drive purchase of our products when they're not in store, things like that. And then new technologies, how do we make sure we're taking advantage of those in the right way? Okay, so that was kind of the, the upfront. So now we're gonna get to the, to the good stuff. So connecting the dots, why are we here? Why are these uh, lovely folks sitting over here? 
How can mobile drive the awareness of a brand new product? So what we're going to do today is we have um, Quaker Chewy. Everyone had a Quaker Chewy bar before? Thank you. OK. <laughs> you guys need to eat some more Cracker Jacks or something. Um, so anyway, the Chewy franchise is launching a new product in early 2012, Chewy Yogurt. Bars are an enormous category. Chewy is a huge business for us, and this is an entirely new platform that we haven't seen yet in the United States. So what was the assignment that we gave these three uh, lucky folks? How do you create a mobile strategy, idea, and plan to support the launch of Quaker Chewy Yogurt Bars? Use the below information, that's what we, we gave them, um, and the PowerPoint to help inform your recommendation. Be as creative as you want, but remain true to the brand and the consumer target. Good luck. So I'm gonna walk you guys through just the basic tenets of what that brief looked like. So as you listen to them and as I listen to them, you'll be able to evaluate them based on the types of things we're looking for and make sure that they, they did the assignment. So who do we have here? We talked about this. Tried to look at it and I put everything in quotes because I didn't want people to take personally what they were being labeled as. But as a, as a brand marketer, you traditionally get calls from a variety of, of groups. So we have the vendor, which is Pandora, the connector, App Savvy, how they bring different mobile apps and social opportunities together, and then the agency, which is Hip Cricket. So getting really three different trains of thought on how they would approach this. The marketing objective. So for Chewy, how do you get the target to buy two more boxes per year sourced from all the different sweet snacks that they buy? We need to, we're providing a new offering to drive incremental purchase from Debbie. So as you can see, this isn't just about a healthy snack opportunity. This is about that entire snacking opportunity. Who's the target? Debbie. She's your quintessential mom. She's all about putting her family first. 25 to 54 with at least one child in the house. So the brand, we're wholesome, playful, approachable, imaginative, purposeful, active, inclusive, and aspirational. Chewy's all about Chewy and Chewy Play. Right now the, the campaign that's out is called Nourish Their Play. So that was something that these guys had access to as well. And then the portfolio, this has to fit within the overall Quaker Chewy message. So the parameters. I, we, we, I tried to fix this twice, it didn't work. We gave them a budget, we're actually at $50,000. So that's what they were all told to work in and from what it sounds like, they all stuck to it right at the $50,000 mark. The time, one week to prepare, five minutes to present, and the catch, having to present in front of a live audience, most of whom tweet. So with that, <laughs> what's gonna happen is we'll let each of these guys go, we'll give them five minutes, I'll ask questions and then I certainly open it up to the audience to ask questions, you know, stump them, help me out here, let's really make sure they, they did the assignment well and then what I would love to do at the end is get a vote, see who you guys think really captured the spirit of the brand and gave us the most effective solution and we'll do an audience vote and then I will share um, my opinion in as well. And I'm sure the one question everyone wants to know is, are you able to actually give someone the, the job? And we had thought about that. We really wanted to. I was ready to you know, write a check at the end of the day. But unfortunately, we're not able to do that. So um, the stakes are high, but not, not as high as we had, had hoped. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Kim. Good luck. All right, on the clock. Well, first off, thank you for the opportunity to figure out how to maneuver this big jobby here. So the first thing that I want to do, because I'm thinking of you guys as my clients as well as Barbara over here, um, is take you guys through some insights that really helped us um, inform our strategic thinking and our, our targeting and creative concept recommendations that we'll lay out. So we know from the brief that Barbara just laid out that Driving awareness and trial is really critical to the success of this launch. Um, Debbie, right? God love her. Um, the mom with the kids that love those heavy, uh, the sweet snacks. Um, she's really, really key as well. And good luck, you know, that's great. Debbies are hard to find, but not on Pandora. Um, the good news is, is that we have Debbies and we have lots of Debbies to offer Chewy. Nearly one third of our female listeners are actually mothers. And Debbie's, 
They log 17 hours of listening per month and interact with our mobile platform on an average of seven times per hour. It's not bad for Debbie, who's busy. <laughs> Debbie's also a big fan of granola snack bars. She um, indexes at a 116 for having consumed one in the last seven days. And this is specific to our mobile users. Um, net net, Pandora's mobile audience is really just made up of qualified, chewy, growth target consumers. So flip into the next slide. I'll take you guys through our creative concept that we've laid out um, and what we're recommending for Chewy. So what we're recommending you guys activate is what we call our power duo unit. Um, and it's not just audio and it's not just banner, you know, visual creative. It's actually both combined. And um, some of you guys that maybe not know, audio on Pandora is very similar to you know, your radio listening experience, except that we have uh, less than one minute of ads per hour that we serve, and we only serve one ad at a time. So you really have that true 100% share of voice in the pod itself. Um, why do we consider this our power duo unit? Because there's no Batman, there's no Robin present, right? Um, we really have done a lot of work to understand exactly what the combination of the two can bring to advertisers. And we know that it drives a 34%. Hi, Pandora listeners. Oh. Satisfy your family's <laughs> afternoon cravings with Quaker Chewy Strawberry Yogurt Bars. Made with whole grain Quaker oats and real fruit pieces, they deliver 10% of recommended daily calcium with only 25% of the sugar. Quaker Chewy Yogurt Bars. Great tasting nutrition the whole family will enjoy. Click the banner for a coupon on our Facebook page. All right, so I was kind of duped by the technology flow there. Um, <laughs> So <laughs> to back up, so why we call this our power duo unit is we know that um, a 34% engagement lift is yielded when we pair audio with the visual ad itself. Um, obviously, we've already taken a look at how this unit can work for, um, for Coinker. <laughs> that was kind of embarrassing, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Um, but essentially, I'll just kind of reiterate that the walk through the user flow. So, you know, you're listening to your Britney Spears station and boom, here you're interrupted with the, the audio, um, the call to action with the full page screen takeover, right? So when you're listening and you, you actually are, are, whoa, hey, I like, I like chewy bars. What's this new? Yogurt? Awesome. Let me check that out. Full, space, full page kind of takeover screen, right? And then when it actually is finished, it dissolves down into that, that banner, um, which most mobile publishers are able to offer you. Moving on to our targeting. So what we've put together for a, you know, a, a strategic perspective from a, you know, for targeting for this Chewy launch is kind of a two-pronged approach. We wanna do a, a major hone in on age and gender so focusing in on what we know Debbie's to be, women 25 to 44, as well as day parting. Um, really honing in on the key snack solution seeking time period. Try to say that five times fast. Um, essentially midday when moms are listening to Pandora and they're making their grocery list or maybe they're out running errands and grocery shopping. And then in the afternoon when their kids arrive home and are asking for that sweet snack. So the targeted placement strategy is really designed to further position Chewy Yogurt as an afternoon snack solution and help overcome the brand's main growth barrier, which was laid out in the brief as being, I don't really think of Chewy as an afternoon snack. And with that being said, Pandora is really excited to collaborate with Chewy on this launch of yogurt and, you know, see where things take us in, I guess, 10 minutes. <laughs> Uh, hello, my name is Doug Stovall and I'm with Hip Cricket. And uh, first I'd like to say hi to all the Hip Cricket people that are watching this streaming in the uh, office. Uh, they were very excited about the streaming component here. Um, there's also a bet going on at the Hip Cricket office that I can't say all of that I need to say in five minutes. So we'll see how that rolls out. Um, so what Hip Cricket did is, uh, to give you a little background, this came in last week. We treated this just like we would treat any opportunity coming from any customer. We took it in, we looked at the opportunity, we assessed it, we figured out how we would go about planning for it. Uh, I took that, so I was involved in that initial phase. I threw it over to our um, three teams that kind of collaborate on deals. Uh, our strategy team, our creative services team, and our technology team. 
and they came back with this presentation. And, um, and so, so kind of giving Kraft, uh, excuse me, Quaker, a uh, heads up on what we did. That's how we came about it. I'll talk about Kraft in a second. <laughs> I'm sure that's real good for us, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Maybe there are some craft people in the audience. Um, and so, uh, so what we come, came back with is a, uh, this program. Uh, we have a 12-month program, starting with the launch of the product, where we're going to do four things. We're going to have a mobile advertising component. I'll talk about that in a second. An in-store component, an on-pack component, and an in-pack component. Uh, we're going to run all of that for 12 months with the goal being, and we try to keep things real simple in our world, we want to sell more chewy bars, chewy yogurt bars. And we don't want to sell just one pack, we want to sell two packs. And that's what our goal here is today. And that's what we want to do for Quaker. So first, uh, we built this around Nourish the Play. That's a concept that Quaker has going on right now. We actually built in a placeholder, I'm sorry, I would point, yeah, a placeholder program uh, around earning awards for school. That program actually doesn't necessarily exist. That could be any program that Quaker's running. The concept is we'll, we will build an advertising program uh, that will uh, run. Uh, our plan for that piece of it is $30,000 and that's going to run. We anticipate our, our re initial recommendation would be to run that over the first three months of the program. Um, you would have a banner, you'd click on it, it would take you to the landing page. That would then drive opt-ins, right? We've got people participating, they're excited, they're opting into the program, this rewards program. Uh, and you gotta remember, opt-ins are important because we don't wanna sell just one box, we wanna sell more boxes, right? So we wanna do some remarketing later. So hold that thought. So that's awareness. Next, we wanna uh, be considered at the point of purchase. So we brought in our shopper marketing guys and we said, hey, what can we do? So we said, when the shopper's own aisle, we wanna sell stuff. And so what we did is, again, building around Nourish the Play concept, uh, on signage in store, we're offering up, uh, again, an opportunity around rewards um, for the school program of your choice. Again, that doesn't necessarily exist today, the program and the rewards. We, that's just a placeholder program. But we went with that because it's socially conscious. People like that sort of stuff. They're going to be inspired when they're on aisle to do stuff, right? But again, we then started throwing an offer in here. So we've seen with other uh, Quaker products, there are coupons involved. So we assumed, we hoped that we could get some coupons and we would actually deliver a coupon while the shoppers own aisle that they could redeem at their Kroger store while they're there. We know Kroger participates in mobile coupons, so that makes life really great, right? So we're now inspiring the shopper while they're on aisle. So that's the second leg of our four-legged sto stool. Next. We have a day in the life. So post-purchase, we're going to put QR codes and text call to actions on every box. We do this today for many of our uh, CPG customers. You probably saw this if you saw um, what we did with Kellogg's around their crunchy nut brands. Thank you. I have one minute, one slide left. I've got this down. Thank you. Uh, and so QR codes on package. This is going to drive to a mobile web landing page, um, actually multiple pages that we're going to actually build as a value add here three pages, that'll be replaced once Quaker launches their full mobile site later this year. And the fourth leg of the stool is a day in the life. So we're going to put um, uh, call to actions in package. We do this for Snickers today, where in package you open it up and you can take some sort of action. With Snickers, it's a text call to action. With Quaker, it may be a mobile web call to action, or text, or both. Could even be a QR code. So those are our four legs of our stool. And what that allows us to do now is we're building that database. So after our ad buy dies, after the first 90 days, we've got a database that's growing from QR code call to actions in store, on package, in package. And then we're sending text call to actions saying, hey, buy your second box of the Chewy Bar. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Um, so um, I just want to make sure we have everything here correct. Okay, great. So um, 2011 was a was a fantastic year for um, for activity. What App Savvy is calling social activity. Um, winners and losers are being minted left and right. And for uh, for Quaker, you'll be happy to know that one of the big losers this year was actually um, 
soap operas. Uh, if you ask producers of soap operas where their customers went this year, a lot of them would say casual gaming. Moms are engaging with casual gaming in a big way. And guess who underwrites soap operas? P&G. So maybe you can stick it to them a little bit there um, by underwriting social gaming. Um, so some of the stats are there. Moms are spending uh, hours per day on their smartphones. Um, a large percentage of moms are playing games with their kids, and if any of any folks in the room here have children that are playing on tablets, um, just try taking the tablet while, while they're playing a game. Uh, scars or maybe a little screaming fit is pretty much guaranteed at that moment. Um, there's been a lot of videos floating around the last week as well about children engaging with these tablet devices. and. You know, since your, your title is Director of Engagement, I think you ought to know about an opportunity that is um, potentially the most engaging one out there at this time, which is basically casual gaming. How do I advance this? Oh, go back. Um, so App Savvy has actually built the first platform that allows advertisers to buy activity at scale. We've actually built a platform that unlocks activity. When mom or when, when child is playing, for example, a social game, we've created a, a platform that delivers an ad in the break of activity and it is fully integrated into the experience. So you'll, what you're going to see is that developers determine how your ad is displayed, not only when it is displayed, but the way in which it is displayed here with the framing of the ad and the custom rich media engagement unit. This is a unit which AppSavvy builds using your existing assets and it performs extremely well because this is new inventory that this user has never seen before. In fact, this platform is launching um, in the beginning of December on mobile devices. As you can see, it's fully enabled with all the functionality of the phone. It includes a share functionality, video, it's a rich media enabled ad. And what we're seeing with these social integrated ads on the web, I'll leave it here. Cream, a touch of sugar, and is engagement rates that exceed 10%. In fact, what we're seeing is that some of the, uh, the, the marketers that we work with are including things like sharing coupons or sharing content. We're seeing that a single paid impression on this platform is turning into three impressions through earned media. So that's going to make your $50,000 investment look a lot bigger than it actually is by delivering earned media. So, um, you know, if there's any, any additional, um, you know, insights in terms of, you know, how we can weave this in here more, uh, more efficiently for the, the thought of being a part of Playtime, we'd be happy to discuss it. But certainly accompanying a child or a mom's gameplay is a fun way to make snacking a part of a fun daily habit, maybe an after school activity. So, moving along. Um, you can basically reach, um, reach uh, mom or child again as they're playing their game, but we're actually going to extend this opportunity to uh, other activities that are a big part of your uh, target's lives. So what basically AppSavvy is doing is allowing you to buy the activity itself. The opportunity isn't around the activity, the opportunity is the activity. So when mom's playing a game, when mom, in the example of Audibly, is uh, placing a review on a book, we serve an integrated ad that is, again, framed and designed by the developer and is in a break in activity as a part of the experience. So basically, Quaker is going to connect with mom as she's both on the go and also doing some of the favorite activities with her family within her home. Um, some of the ideas that we came up with, we could certainly do coupon distribution, we could have content be a part of the experience. We'd really love to see how we can make um, these, the, basically your content shine within this integrated experience. So moving along to the next slide, um, this is again a little bit of a larger shot of the user flow. When someone actually performs an activity, in the case of WeRule, um, adding a, a building to their, to their, uh, to their kingdom, um, that's where the, the break in activity comes and Quaker's message is served. So it's basically a natural moment in time for an advertiser to be a part of the experience. And if you go to the last slide, what you'll see um, is again, we can integrate any number of calls to action into the experience. It's a, it's an, a new uh, ad unit that we are unlocking for advertisers in 2012. And if you guys, uh, since you love tweeting so much, I thought I'd leave a tweetable moment. Um, 2011 was the year of uh, social activity. We believe 2012 is going to be the year that advertisers embrace social activity in a bit, big way. We believe that social activity will accompany a place like search and display in an advertiser's mind share for their budget in, the, in 2012. So I'd like to leave it on that note. We're really excited. The engagement here is very strong, and uh, we'd love to uh, be a part of the uh, experience.
No, this was great. Do these, are, do these work? Or can you hear me? Do you need me to keep talking? No. Okay. I don't even like to hear me that much. Um, and I like to talk. So first, thank all of you so much for doing this. I meant to say in the beginning, I felt so lucky that we had such great partners to, to, per, to participate with us. So I forgot to say that up front. So thank you for the time that went into this. Um, I have a couple of questions and then I would love to turn it over to you guys for, for your questions and, and thoughts as well. So um, my first question I think is more for um, Kim and, and Michael in terms of what are my dollars going to, to get me? Um, you kind of referenced it's a 12 month program. So I'm just curious real quickly where is this one month, three weeks? What type of reach do you think we'll have? And I can, I can speak to uh, the, our program that we laid out. So, um, again, working within the parameters that were given in the brief, uh, $50,000 was the budget that will afford you a two-week campaign. So it'll take you from start date of December 12th through December 25th. It will get you approximately 3.85 million impressions. And that equates to roughly a 10% share of voice on our platform during that time period. So um, the, the flight is something that we could discuss, but uh, we would recommend running a two to three week flight similar to Pandora just to keep the uh, experience as fresh as possible. Um, the 50,000 budget would purchase approximately 5.2 5 million impressions on our platform targeted to your audience. And then as I quoted, if we were to add um, additional functionality uh, in terms of earned media into the experience, we could potentially triple that in terms of delivery, so. Got it. So now that I got that out of the way, just take a step back, kind of go through each one of yours and what really caught my attention. Um, for Kim, Pandora, I loved kind of the, the engagement of the, the ad and how you get mom with that sound and with the, the visual. I think that's, that's really important and I believe that she is listening to that music. It's a great place to reach our consumer on the go. Um, the Hip Cricket definitely really appreciated the the consideration given to the retail opportunities and how we can work with those partners to drive traffic into the store. Also really like the opportunity to capture that, that data, as I mentioned earlier, community is something that we're looking to do. So how can we continue that, that relationship with them? I thought was, was really uh, smart. And then Michael, with you guys, I think for us gaming is something that's really exciting and the tie to the Nourish Their Play seems like they're somewhat meant um, to be together and I like how it's tied into the activity as well as having that kind of coupon opportunity Which I think a lot of you had all together. So each one was extremely I should have done this before I started asking questions. So tacky um, So thank you each one was really well thought out you followed the brief you you got to who the consumer was where she was and what we were trying to do so Thank you for that um, Questions other questions that I had um, for you, uh, you talked a lot about all these different opportunities and I know we don't have a rewards program or this or that, so of course I start spinning the wheels of, oh, this is actually going to cost me another $250,000 to put all of this in, in play, but I would love to hear a little bit more around some of the ideas you have that back up the content piece, whether even if we just did one, if it's a QR code, are there other opportunities there, what would some of that content what could it look like, and is that something you guys can help provide? Hello, hello, yeah. Uh, so we actually thought about that, and we assumed that that would you, what you'd call us out on, because uh, we, you know, we kind of, you know, we'd love to have the rewards program, but you don't have one, and uh, candidly, you'd probably never get one put in place by the time this would go live, right? And uh, hope. Hopefully you would, but that would be hard. Um, so, uh, you know, honestly, we went out and looked at your Facebook content, which you have a significant amount of content on Facebook alone. So I think, and, and a strong community there. And so what we thought we could utilize that as backup, quote unquote, content if, if, if we had to have a fallback. Okay. Good. Um, I, we only, what time does this end? 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Okay. So what I would love to do, to be honest, is I would love to get some of your questions, comments, feedback. This is kind of my opportunity to, to phone a friend. So does anyone have any questions, thoughts, pieces of advice for me? I told you this was going to happen. We got one. I just had 
a quick question for Pandora. Uh, there was, you had mentioned it was display as well as audio, but I just know my user behavior when I listen to music on my phone is my, my phone is in my pocket or it's in my purse. So I don't even see any ads that may appear on it. I would hear it, but I'm just curious, do you have engagement rates regarding the display portion or just the audio? We do actually, that's a great question, comment. Um, we get that a lot. So the audio paired with the visual is actually designed to combat that, that, that situational, right? So you got your phone in your purse, you're commuting to work, and you're, you know, suddenly you hear the Quaker Chewy commercial and you're like, oh my gosh, I got, I got, I got to get me one of them. I need to learn more. You pull out your phone. So the, the display banner that follows the audio ad will stay on the screen itself until you actually, number one, interact with the player. So you skip a song or change your station, um, or 20 minutes passes when the next audio ad is served. So. I was, I was curious how um, Michael and, and, uh, and Kim, since you're representing both mainly media experiences, an interactive game or a social game, uh, interactive radio, and, and Doug is able to bring in this sort of this database element of being able to maintain, get a relationship with the consumer and keep them. Um, how can you add that sort of component into your proposal that would sort of give, give, that, heft, give that sort of database heft to it, that continuing relationship with a customer? Do you have a, are you able to provide something like that as well? Yeah, I mean, I can take this one first. Um, so yes, so the way that we would deliver that CRM like call to action or, or opportunity is through different types of ad units. Um, you know, we can have a you know click to register, so join the Quaker Chewy community. Um, it, it's all played out in a creative type of platform or the creative kind of that's served up. Um, so certainly that piece we could add as well. Um, I think what your question is getting at is uh, how do you measure sort of activity after the ad experience? Um, what we've seen through the, the programs that we've done is that um, the ability to be a part of someone's activity not only assures that your ad is seen, but it also delivers extremely strong engagement rates because you're reaching people when they're already active, leaning forward in an environment. And as a result of them touching your brand on multiple levels, both in, from the first impression to the second and third impression, it actually moves product. If, if you saw on the first slide, there were some screenshots from some campaigns we've run this year, and we would work with the marketer to determine a back-end KPI that would make sense, but in the case of a studio, we actually were a part of exit polling that revealed that these game integrations, um, especially on a cost-weighted basis, are extremely efficient in terms of driving ticket sales. So would love to work with the marketer on determining a KPI that mo moves product, sells, uh, sells uh, Chewy bars. Hi, I'm Aaron Shapiro. I have a couple of questions for Kim and for Michael. First question is time spent playing the game, time spent listening. Um, sure. So to speak specifically to the Debbies um, mm -hmm. on Pandora, they log 17 hours uh, interacting with our, our platform per month. So, you know, I think that and they, they interact with the, the tuner seven times per hour. So. So um, it, it, unfortunately, it's difficult to quantify today um, what percentage of the growth in mobile gaming comes from mom specifically, but I can rely on the data we have from Facebook. Um, the fastest growing audience on that platform in gaming, actually in general, um, is moms, uh, 30, women 35 plus, and also over 50% of the growth on Facebook the last uh, two years has been from gaming directly. So. I also quoted the soap opera example. We know that moms are leading the way with casual gaming. Casual gaming has unlocked a new audience um, to gaming, which we're all very excited about. But what about, what about going the other way? And if there was like a, some kind of added value thing that you could do for the kids' side of things, if the kids are playing or if there's like kids' music channels or something like that, that's assuming that Quaker o, that the Chewy Bar would want to target kids, but I'm just thinking that could make the, the package for both of you guys kind of a little richer, no? 
Yeah, agreed. Currently, we rely on developer um, insights in terms of who is using their games, and we would certainly share that information with the marketer to assure that we offer a program that either reaches both or reaches the audience they're trying to acquire today. But the part of the reason we build our platform is we're bringing standards to the industry. So we hope that we'll be able to provide more analytics like that in the near future. Yeah, actually, I was going to ask about something pretty similar. It seems like for App Savvy, it's primarily based on sort of moms playing the games. You talked a little bit about sort of moms are using the smartphones a lot, and they engage with their kids in games. I was just curious, what kind of statistics do you have that moms are actually playing these types of games on smartphones sort of digitally? Um, so, I, I mean, uh, the first slide included a few of those statistics. Um, I, I would also point to the, the, the um, overall ownership rates of uh, the, these devices amongst a certain audience. And then finally, um, I would also point to the, the way that casual gaming has um, acquired that specific audience. The way that we, we typically measure it is by looking at the engagement rates with other forms of media in the home and how they've changed with the introduction of these, um, these devices. But unfortunately, there isn't as much research as we would like. It's, it's certainly something that we're hoping comes about and that we can lead. There are some um, great resources out there. AppData.com is one that maybe some of you have heard of or been familiar with. Um, it actually quantifies activity on applications. We have time for one more question. Hi, this is uh, Megan from MediaVest. I had a question for Doug. I was wondering if you could speak to uh, typical interaction rates you might see with some of your in-store and unpack elements to your plan. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, you know, they're all over the place, honestly. Uh, I wish we had, could tell you that, that um, they're always wonderful. It, it depends a lot on the placement of the call to action in the store, whether it's actually, um, you know, on aisle, uh, in cap. Um, but we certainly, um, and it's also a lot of times the product you're selling. So we do a lot of work with Miller Coors. So you can imagine maybe you have higher response rates with beer than you do with nature-made vitamins. Maybe that's another customer of ours. Um, and you know, beer tends to have a better placement in store than maybe vitamins. Uh, but um, but our response rates overall tend to be very good um, um, for that sort of thing. So shall we? Start by, by putting it to a vote and seeing which of, which of our providers our audience thinks you should be going with first. And, and, then, wrote, we'll come, and yeah. then we'll end with you and your impressions. And I, I, wrote, mine, I wrote mine down, so um, <laughs> you, I won't be swayed by, by you. But I will say, this was, this was really hard. I kind of now wish I'd brought in three similar people because I'm like, oh, I really like social gaming, and oh, but Pandora, that's so <laughs> intriguing, and oh, the retail component. So. Um, I wish I had $150,000. So this was this was uh, not not easy for for me. And obviously, we certainly would have more questions and things like that. But um, I did write down my choice. I'll give you my rationale um, afterwards. But I would love to see what what you guys think. So let's uh, let's do it by by a show of uh, of hands. Uh, who would go first with uh, with hip cricket? I'm not good at counting. Somebody, John, John Whitfield, would you do, do this? Keep an eye on hands. <laughs> this is very technical. I'm, I'm blinded by the light and blinded by a lot of other very things. Very technical. Done, got it. OK. <laughs> Pandora. Mainly that side of the room. Mainly, Mainly that side of the room. <laughs> and App Savvy. For my money, it's App Savvy wins with a tie between the other two. My money. That's, my money. that's that's the audience vote. Barbara, what is your decision? So, like I said, this was a very, very difficult decision. And just so you guys know, I didn't see any of this beforehand. So I saw all of this for the first time um, with you all. And how I made my decision process, or how I went through this, was thinking about who I have to sell this into, which is the brand team. But it certainly helps if you can bring some of the other kind of constituents along, such as the shopper team, the finance team, all, all of those folks. Um, so like I said, this was very tough, and I love the idea of doing something in social gaming. We need to be there. I've wanted to do something with, with Pandora. I think it makes so much sense for our consumers and on the go. Um, and while I still have some reservations about the amount of things you propose, I actually went with um, the Hip Cricket solution 
for its retail and shopper component. Are you, who are you with? Oh, hi, sorry. I thought my booming voice would do it. But um, so I ended up going with, with the Hip Cricket solution only because like I said, I really think that shopper component will have a lot of appeal to the rest of the division. We'd get some hopefully great learnings in terms of sales impact, which at the end of the day, everybody's like, I get it, Barbara, digital's important, but how is it gonna drive sales? And this would help me balance some of the other things we're doing. I really like that opt-in capture thing as community is something that's, that's important to us. And it also kind of tested some new technologies, which we haven't done, which is the, the QR code and, and things like that and capturing them in the aisle. So like I said, it was very, very, very close. I can't thank each of you enough for your, your time. And I know it wasn't just you, that there's people back at the office who who helped get this ready, so my, <laughs> it's like the Oscars. Yeoman's work, thanks everybody, and, and really shows how, uh, I mean they all did this in a week, by the way. Uh, it shows how, I think, how deft, um, how pliant, and also how, uh, how sophisticated mobile marketing has become. Uh, I'm going to, I thought I saw my last panel in the back of the room. Um, I think I lost them, they're out in the hall. Somebody